find out because Bloodhounds took the game from, B uh, from the Ohio Brothers. So let's see who will take this series. Take it away, casters. All right, as we are going to now be jumping in to the amazing draft between these two teams. You can't wait to see which way it's going to go. Bloodhounds and Knights of Fate, the final series for the Losers quarterfinals today. Whoever wins this will move forward to the semifinals. I can't wait to see where this goes. But now looking at the draft, right? Let's go ahead and just talk about both of these teams. Bloodhounds, they've been surprising. They got Boca Roscoe, a big Twitch streamer out there, kind of one of the captains for the team. Easy peasy, the first jungler to pull out a Savage in the fall season on the Mardis, right? Looking at Knights of Fate, they're up and coming, right? Kai, really good in the jungle. You would have thought it would have been Zero. You know, we got Regrets and Zero, former Gosu players. And now in the building, you've got Mikasa, who's been kind of traveling around multiple teams and at the top eight level. These are both powerhouses, and this is honestly a, a really exciting match to see. We've never seen them go against each other before. Yeah, definitely. And Bloodhounds actually took a match away from TOB, so we're going to keep that in mind. But Knights of Fate also, their their draft phase is very interesting. Um, we did see 1-3-1. One, one. We did see the matchup. It kind of just told itself, right? Got to watch out for Mikasa and Freya and Edith. But looks like Bloodhounds actually is going to go ahead and ban out the Assassins to prevent the Fanny pick, you know, respect Zero. And we also see Ling respect Kai. And we do see Angela also being played by Powerless, and he actually played exceptionally well. The Heart Guard was able to save every single member and made Wheezy go crazy to pick Esmeralda <laughs> for his hero. But Bloodhounds, I feel like Easy Peasy was the one that kind of set the tempo up for their team name, right? They, they are full of surprises. They were the ones that kind of came in very strong, came in with the Marta Savage first game, and then Booker Roscoe. You know, he has a lot of mage pools, right? He's he's literally a Supreme Sicilian, has picked up good mages as well. So, gotta watch out for his mage as well. Sleeps, good marksman player. Seen him prevail on the Melissa, on the Beatrix. We saw all that all happen in our previous series. But, we're gonna see the pig face start for Bloodhounds, actually. And there is, there's Terizla, there's Eve. But knowing that, you know... You know, from the other previous games, Boca Roscoe actually got banned out so many times to the point where he played a high level smid at one point. So definitely wanted to maybe get a mage pick early, but Dino's going to go ahead and pick up Export early. Uh, and we see the last insanity do exceptionally well. So Knights of Fate, I'm kind of wondering how they're going to respond to that. Definitely, I'm, I'm calling a Frey or Edith already. Oh, the Frey or the Edith. Nice and early, yeah. huh? That's a bold statement. Nice and early. Nice Let's see if it happens. What are but, you what are you guessing? Uh Navaria or Bloodhounds. No, I'm talking about Knights of Fate. Oh. I know, I just I'm wanted wrong. to get something in because uh I, I gotta get something right. And I feel like Navaria for Boca Roscoe's <laughs> been a problem, right? But Valentina was available. Okay, Terizla. Just save it Terizla, which is a great breed. I mean, definitely two high value targets, right? I mean, this is gonna provide draft pressure for Knights of Fate and their advantage. Bloodhounds now has to be careful. There's really two ways to counter the Valentina. Crafting. You either pick heroes, all heroes that she can't profit from, or you pick all heroes she can profit from to overwhelm her. So, really excited to see which way this goes. But I do know Dino on Kudita. this uh, export pick is a smart one. I say Kadita. I will Kudita? fight you on this prediction because I'm already one of us is going to lose our prediction, so I might as well fight it out with you in draft. I think he's going to pick Kadita. I think he's going to Mario, right? I said Navaria. I think both of them are great because... Mardis. Uh, oh, whoa. Oh. Okay, no mage pick yet. Okay, okay. Okay. Patience. So we have... We have Rome still open, right? For Knights of Fate. The la that last one. Oh, there's still jungle open too. They might pick up Mardis, actually. I know it... it, it um, he can get through with the Mortar Coils, the CC. Is able to do well, but Carrie's gonna burst. So I don't know if that's a really a good idea. And Frederick and Carrie also got picked up in a pair, and on top of the X board. So, I want to see what they pick. Andrew's banned. What do you assassin. think? They pick up an assassin. I mean, there's no suppression on the table right now, so I mean, you Kaja? can lock it in and then Franco? and then ban out the suppression. Yeah, I mean, Kaja, Kaja Franco's a good option. The Hayabusa could definitely work, especially against Boca Roscoe on this carry. I mean, you could just dive in, take him down, get out. But no, they're gonna go ahead and pick up a marksman, Quad. which is not the worst decision. I mean, he can kind of chip into the damage. Or to the physical build from Easy Peasy and Dino, right? I mean, that's two strong frontline heroes uh, that you are going to have to work against. So, I mean, you got early game, you got late game checked off, four nights of fate, and then you got the front.
frontline presence for Mikasa. So, I mean, the, the draft is looking solid so far. I feel like they're... I feel like Knights of Fate might block Bokorosko from picking anything. They have two bands left, right? And Bokor... I, I, I cannot kid you. Every single series I have seen Bokorosko play, his mages just always get so limited. So, the <laughs> Volier is out. Now the Faramus is out. I mean, there's still obviously other picks, but... His one tricks, his very comfortable picks, have been continuously getting banned out. So hopefully, Bokorosko can pick up a good mage this time. And Sleeps is definitely gonna be running that carry. Coppola, I wonder what what Rome can be suitable here, right? You give the Lolita, um, Zero's gonna take it, right? The Valentina, the IMU. So I don't know. Valentina gives a lot of draft pressure. So Bullet Hounds has to be careful. Like, like they can pick up suppression, but Valentina's just gonna pick it right up. So. Kufra, yeah. getting, Kufra got banned. It's not bad. I mean, I feel like both sides have answers so far. It's, it's definitely a smart draft. Uh, I just can't wait to see which way this goes. Uh, but it's pretty even so far. I mean, even looking at Bloodhounds, they have late game checked off. They have strong frontline early presence. I, I think they need some some more early game damage, though. So maybe going in for an early game mage could be an answer. I wouldn't go in for something like the Farza, though, just considering you got a Valentina, you've got a Claw to go against. So... Something like a Lilia could definitely work. I mean, the Valentina couldn't profit. Uh, you can use the Black Shoes to basically undo all the damage that Regrets is going to do to you. And then also you can use it to escape the penalty zone from uh, Terizla. So I think that's a, that could possibly work. Uh, the Kadita that you mentioned uh, just got banned oh, out, so that's definitely banned. not going to go. Um, yeah. I don't see Navaria here. The only reason I don't see Navaria is because I feel like it would just be too much of a passive uh, play style for Bloodhounds right now. They definitely have to play from afar uh, a lot more than they would like to. But Kasha does get taken off the table. So, I mean, this opens up the door for Knights of Fate to pick up Grok? the Hayabusa. I, I just saw Grok open, right? Powerless has ran Grok before in that roam position. Powerless is the roamer for Knights of Fate. So, I kind of want to see what they're thinking. Because they did pick up a Marksman. Definitely Kai might go for an assassin only because of the carry. There's no peel. Or there's there's no dive. I mean there is Mikasa with the with the penalty zone, yes, but it has to be enough. And once carry gets fed, her speed of light wheels is gonna take him down pretty fast. So I'm looking at I'm gonna call my pick for Bloodhounds. Farsa. I feel like Farsa's I don't even know if Farsa's actually viable here because of Lance. Yeah. Ah, I wouldn't do far. Easy, come I, on. I'm gonna fight with um, you all this. What are you what are you thinking? I said Lilia. I think Lilia would be good here. Um I feel like that's probably one of their best options. The Lunox, I mean maybe if you wanted to have some survivability thrown in there, it definitely could work. Would it be the easiest to pull off? Maybe not. Um I mean the Kagura is definitely an option too for the early phase. Kagura? And also um I wonder if that could sneak in there. I mean, you are right, though. Like, limiting a lot of the mid lane picks, <laughs> they're definitely worried about Boca yeah, Rosco right now. Banned. But I wouldn't go uh, late game mage. I would go something early because you already have the carry for the late game. E and Eve? Oh! Novaria. Oh! I said it in the very beginning, but then he I didn't did. think they were going to actually wow. pull it off. Okay. So they did pick up the Novaria. So Lance definitely has a lot of die potential on the carry. He might go for the tanks a lot or hybrid for sure. Um, see, the thing is, Knights of Fate, they are very, you know, they're surprising with their draft. So I don't even know what he's going to pick anymore. <laughs> so maybe... Sustainability. Oh, they're going to go in for the... Okay. Carmilla. Okay, okay. So if Powerless can combo well with Mikasa, that's deadly. So Bokrasko definitely a little bit of swapping around. We've seen Edith Rome before happen. I think TOB played Edith Rome for the first time before anybody else did, but did very well. So definitely have to look, but drafts finished, Wheezy. And I'm looking at this. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of X factors out there. I really yeah. want to see which way this goes. Uh, I mean, that's definitely a Bloodhounds type of drafting style. Bokrasko getting comfortable on the Navaria. That could be a problem. I would say there's a lot more or, uh, yeah, Blood but this House is right also now. a Knights of Fate draft. Like, you can just completely tell it. You don't pick Carmilla right now in this <laughs> Yeah, that's what but, I was going to yeah. say. We got two comfort picks put against each other. As we are now jumping into game number one 
of the last series for today, the loser quarterfinals, Bloodhounds going up against Knights of Fate in a best of three. Definitely, we are seeing the last series of the day. We are seeing Bloodhounds versus Knights of Fate, and we're gonna see both of these junglers do their best to keep themselves at bay with the points. But let's take a look. We already see Boko Ross have a little bit of trouble. Obviously, our girl will definitely be pulled towards Knights of Fate towards that mid lane. They have a lot of clear, but once Novaria gets her first and second skill, she will definitely be able to clear minions a lot faster. You know, it's funny too, when we were talking about the Valentino, we were talking about how you can kind of counter it in the draft. Either pick a bunch of heroes that she profits on or a bunch of heroes that she doesn't. And they picked a bunch of heroes that she doesn't profit on. So it will be a little bit of an awkward game for Zero on this Valentina, because there's not really too many ultimates that he can dominate with, right? I mean, he guess he can get the Astral Echo from Boko Rosco if needed, or, or, or rush him with the Last Insanity, or an Appraiser's Wrath, but none of them are, like, really super strong options. I, I guess maybe going in for the Astral Echo can help, except for be a little bit of a harder time. Yeah, I could give the Vision and increase that, the hit markers, but Speaking oh, of damage, power. powerless, very low. Sleep draws first blood, picks up the kill. It doesn't go to just anybody. Goes to the ADC for Bloodhounds. Yeah, Carmilla is very squishy. We saw the kind of the same story tell itself in our last series where uh, Knights of Fate did pick Carmilla, but power just kept getting chunked off really easily in the early game stage, and he kind of needs to stack up on his defense in order to actually do and sustain a little bit more uh, damage, but... Here we go, mid side. Yeah, you're already seeing Bloodhounds take the first kill, but will they be able to get the first objectives? You are slowly starting to see both teams rotate around to this turtle. We know with the recent patch updates, turtle now gives 12% additional XP uh, boost to whichever team gets it. And you can definitely see them focusing on this objective heavily, forcing out the flicker, flicker. from Coppola. Easy peasy now rushing in. He does have the retribution, but can he close the distance? A four man Astro Echo from Boko Rosco showing his mastery in the mid lane. Kai is going to go ahead and get that turtle, but Boko with the snipe taking him very low. Easy peasy takes that powerless. Boko finds Mikasa. Kai very low. Won't we'll be able to get out of there. But that is going to be a two for none trade. But wait a minute. Dodge the Prince rep. And goes back in for that knock up. Zero finds Easy Peasy. Gets a double. Takes down Dino, even and out the scoreboard, three to three. And that is a beautiful micro play from Zero coming in. Two zero on the board for him, but score is still tied up. We do see the gold leading into Zero currently as he is sitting with two kills on the board, but right behind him is Boko Rosco. But look at the gold laners right now. We are looking at the gold pretty tight and even, but Carrie is going to go ahead and pick up her first core item, which is going to be Corrosion. But they're looking for a little bit of a siege, and this is what we want to see, the pressure towards that gold lane as they really start the snowball and really have the most amount of damage towards that mid to late game. Yeah, and you are going to see the Demon Hunter picked up by Regrets as well. So both of them already getting their core items, not even going in for the boots. War Axe picked up from Kai to be able to deal a little bit more damage at pin when he is in these fights, kind of wanting to fight it in for the long run. Oh, there you are awesome. seeing Kai right there. Getting Boca very low, but he is going to go ahead and snipe out those minions so he can go back and get some HP. Mm, we do see it. Dude. Kai loves to do a little bit of peekaboos here and there, right? He doesn't fully commit, but he'll come and say hi and let him know that they're there. But Regrets is farming up pretty nicely. Hasn't been taken off the board, but here comes Coppola. And I feel like whichever marksman steps out right now might just not be at stake. But Power is actually going back home. Wait, Powerless in the bush does have the Curse of Blood. Is going to connect. Blazing Duet canceled out by the knockup of Coppola. Using the Primal Wrath now. Vengeance activated, trying to sustain and deal the damage back. But Sleep with the Speedy Light Wheels is going to find Powerless. That is his third death so far in the past four minutes. Oh, here comes Zero. It's done. Coppola is going to flicker away, though. Gets back to the turret, almost falling. That's a beautiful cancel, however, coming in on the Blitz and do it, but... Easy peasy gonna claim that turtle for the side of the Bloodhounds. An objective in their hands. Both teams currently holding one turtle. Last Insanity on a Mikasa from Dino secures that kill. Clock of Destiny was picked up from Boko Rosco too, so he will have a little bit more sustainability and extra mana when it comes to these engagements. Yeah, and definitely engagement as well, but you said earlier, right? When Valentina can 
profit off of the ults. You thought Astro Echo was one, but he's actually using Coppola's ult. The problem wrath. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't really have the best selection to choose from, which I, I feel like he can still pull it off. It's just a little bit awkward uh, for the Valentina. But nonetheless, I mean, as long as he can, he can use it when needed, his team can definitely profit. But right now, speaking of profiting, you're looking at a pretty much even game, right? Both teams claiming a turtle. No turrets have fallen so far. But Slow you are looking setting. at Bloodhounds leading by two kills. Yeah. Even though it's two kills, though, the goal lead isn't too much yet, right? But both teams are playing this nice and slow. We both know that both of these marksmen does need to scale, but Sleeves is sitting at 2-0 right now, so definitely need to have an answer for him before he starts to get way too fed for Knights of Fate to go ahead and, and respond to his pick by bot side. Still play called in. They are going to possibly get a pick off, but he does have the BMI, so I don't think they'll be able to pull that off. But you are right. Sleeps is going to be the determining factor on who has the power in this game. I mean, he has two kills so far, so he's definitely up in gold compared to Regrets. And speaking of Regrets, Regretting stepping into that situation, hit with a chain of CC, and Sleeps with a speedy light wheel is going to take down Powerless. Yeah, look at Dino getting chipped off this wall. Zero doing a lot of damage, but also he's sitting at 2-0 right now too, so... Sleeps and Zero kind of holding the damage dealers for right now for both sides, but Sleeps definitely needs to have an answer in how he's going to determine these team fights. But Knights of Fate has to determine how they want to take Sleeps off the board, as if he gets too fed, this might be too late for things to get turned around. And there you go, two for one jungler when you put the Navara, Navaria in Boca Roscoe's hand. He is going to get that turtle for Bloodhounds. Two turtles in their favor, one over what Knights of Fate currently has. Now looking at the battle or a siege for the mid lane, you are looking at a lot of pressure over there. But on the bottom side, the blink of an eye and the speedy night wheels regrets very low. Wow. Blazing duets out of there. I'm, I'm confused about the blazing duet. I don't think that part was necessary, but he is very low. He's going to have to let this turret go. I don't think he can go in and contest it, but no, he is still going to go in. He does have zero wrapping around. A good rotation from the Knights of Fates to punish the mobilization. Curse of Blood Regrets is going to take down Sleeps. They get another. Oh. Coppola is going to find zero. Boko Roscoe taking down Regrets. Coppola now rotating around. Powell is still in position to contest them from taking this turret. Yeah, that was a beautiful snipe coming in from Boko Roscoe. And that is one of his best mages over there. But they're going to go ahead and take this turret away from Knights of Fates. Oh, and, oh, and possibly a kill on that. Turret. Yeah, oh. Powerless trying to run away. Wait, what? I, I think he can get it. No! Oh, he just that's not a 1 up. HP. That's a 0.5 HP escape. Wow. I know Carmilla also has regen, I believe, with her first skill, right? Oh, Makai. Did you see? Dino picked up the Ice Queen wand as well, so he will be able to provide that slow when he uses the fire missiles. Some good utility to stop Knights of Faith from running away. Uh, you can definitely see the strategy that Bloodhounds are starting to form right now as if we're able to take that turret on the bottom side, meaning they definitely have the map advantage. And now, the invasion for the purple buff, Thorn Rose in, the knockup, but he's able to get oh! it, but at what cost is Coppola is going to take down Kai, gets another Dino, finds Powerless, two members falling for the Knights of Fate, make that a third, it's easy peasy, takes down Regrets. Takes down Regrets, that is a 0 for 3 trade for Bloodhounds, but... Knights of Fate has to be careful right now as they're not looking too great with the kill score. 11 of 4. Goal lead is starting to snowball into Bloodhounds' hands. And Boca Roscoe, 2 0 6, Weezy. And Bloodhounds needing this victory, right? They're currently sitting at the number 4 position and they want to solidify their spot. We call them the gatekeepers. Them and Avalon oh, no. currently sitting at the door, not allowing any of the teams at that fifth position to move forward for a chance to compete in the playoffs. Boca Roscoe with the sniper from afar finds Mikasa. What the four man Astro Echo and a sniper at the end of it is going to find one member four nights of fate, increasing the kill lead 12 to 4. Yeah, definitely have to call up Lez to see who has a better sniper over there, but definitely took down Mikasa, which puts him already at a disadvantage, but also Mikasa sitting at 0 3, which is not something you rarely see Mikasa doing, right? You always see him dominating his lane, but for this time, the damage is already too much, and Dino being able to kind of face him in like up front get, get nice and personal with him it's able to take down a lot of damage but look at dino see he's just he's just chilling look at him yeah but i'm looking Staying at the low. top side as well bloodhound's definitely focusing on trying to take the turret i think the lord is just a distraction dino there to keep the team busy 
and they will be able to take that turret in the top lane. I mean, Sleeps is all by himself, but no, he's just going to let the minions clear it out. They're going to go ahead and shift to the mid lane. High IQ play. He knows the minions can do it. He doesn't need to waste any time up there, and they're going to go ahead and secure that turret for the top lane. And look, it looks like Bloodhounds is trying to siege this mid lane turret as well, but shifting their focus over to bot side and keeping two at mid and Coppola. Good area to be giving vision, but Powerless really needs to come online. He's sitting at 0-5. Has his ultimate hasn't been able to do the best, but should be able to once he starts stacking up his defense. But wow, Boca Roscoe is always hitting more than two people or, or just two in general. He's never missing his Astro Echo. And I'm just wow, paying attention he also to sniped sleeps. zero. <laughs> sleeps three, one, and five right now, on fire with this carry. Right? I mean, looking at Mikasa, he's having a hard time getting on the line. He's zero, three, and zero. Powerless is zero, five, and two. Both of them combined making a majority of the deaths for their team. Not really working out in the way they wanted it to. But the later this goes, maybe they can build some defense. But also, sleeps can build more damage, and that carry can definitely be a problem if left unchecked. Definitely left unchecked, but we are looking at a 11 minute time stamp right now. Kind of in the mid game area, not too much yet with the items for sure, as the gold is 5k into the hands of Bloodhounds, but definitely they do have the advantage when it comes to macro. None of their turrets have been touched either. This kind of looks like the story that we saw from Avalon versus A77, but here comes the siege on that bot side. Yeah, the siege on the way. They are going to go ahead and take their tier 2 turret. Sleeps picks it up. Does he pick up the kill? Yes, he does. Finds Powerless with the speedy light wheels. You are going to go ahead and see the last insanity rushing in onto Zero. Forcing out the flicker. Man of executions in. Kai trying to deal some damage with the Thorn Rose. Boca Roscoe taking out Mikasa. The Navaria mid lane coming alive. 14 to 4 so far. Bloodhounds leading the way in game one, the last series of the quarterfinals for the losers bracket. And here we go. Shifting their focus over to Lord. And everyone's gonna go ahead and start this up and looks like this is a lord uncontested unless kai can work his way through he's looking to use a thorn rose around but looks like he might just have to give it up easy peasy so go ahead and secure the lord for bloodhounds right and they trade that lord for a turret if you looked on the bottom side regrets was down there able to take that first turret but I think that's still a good trade for Bloodhounds because they also got the mid turret to open up the map even more in their favor. Maybe able to go in for the tier two as well. They just have so much pressure up against Knights of Fates. And I just feel like it's boiling down to execution. Yes, their draft was okay, but they're just not executing it the way they intended, right? I mean, Powerless jumped in and took like three deaths so far uh, within the first four minutes and now up to six deaths for the team. It's just not that effective so far for what we're seeing on this Carmilla. And talking about Carmela Sleeps, almost at 10k gold right now, almost at his full build. Definitely looking to build in maybe that Wind of Nature as he is building that pathway up towards that item. And Powerless, his gold is so under. And, you know, he's been taking out the board so many times, so he's not able to capitalize on the, board near, uh, the gold near his team. But 4-man Astro Echo ult. Boca Roscoe is definitely getting a lot of vision for his team. Yeah, now gonna go ahead and take that tier 2 turret and an inhibitor 2 for 1, make that 3 for 1! They're just going on a shopping spree right now, taking everything away from Knights of Fate. As they take 2 inhibitors, leaving only the top one standing, this may be a possible early finish. We gotta see how Knights of Fate can turn this around, right? I think it's definitely gonna start with playing passive. They're too far behind in the economy, it's already a 10,000 gold lead. We went 10,000 gold. Looks like they're gonna go ahead and take this inhibitor turret. Five Whoa. man after all. Oh, here we go. Big play from Boca Roscoe to set up his team for the kill. Sleeps is gonna find one. Easy PG takes down Powerless. The cause of falls. Zero falls as well. Dino picking up that kill. Making another. Sleeps takes down. Regrets for the double. Coppola takes down Kai for a full wipeout on the Knights of Fate. And Bloodhound is gonna secure game one. Yeah, beautiful game. And congratulations, Bloodhound, for taking away the first win of your series but that is you just kind of saw how bloodhounds played their way right this is what bloodhounds is known for their play style and boca roscoe with those mage picks is something that you don't want to give up to him right but that is a beautiful game coming in it's kind of very one-sided towards that mid to early game knights of fate definitely has to kind of tweak their roster just a little bit not the roster but more towards a draft as it wasn't looking too great, right? Powerless getting taken off too early. Mikasa following that as well. So 
definitely have to move around some picks or possibly, you know, switch up the draft, the style to kind of match up with Bloodhounds. Yeah, I mean, right. It was more like a one-sided story. Bloodhounds was just able to kind of close it out with a fast finish. It's about like, what, 15, 16 minutes? Just definitely showing you that they're evolving and scaling through those times. That's one of the most things I'm excited about Bloodhounds. I mean, we kind of look at what they've been doing for the professional scene in North America. They're always in the NACTs, and this is their first time getting a top eight placement. And now, fighting their way for a possible top four placement, right? They're only getting closer and closer to a ticket, possibly to M5. Now, looking at Knights of Fate, we got to see them turn this around. We're looking at the post-game stats so far. 14-minute game. We are looking at a 14-minute game. One of those faster-ended games. 19 kills on the board for Bloodhounds. And looks like Boca Roscoe is going to come in with a perfect KDA 4-0. No deaths on the board for him. But look at Sleeps coming on line 6-1. And Coppola able to give many sets. And he's actually one away from a full kill participation. So that's how you know Coppola has been giving most of those sets. Easy peasy going and running that friend and jungle. Definitely going to give him the most objective plays. But Weezy, break me down in this replay. Breaking down is exactly what was happening right there, but Bloodhounds breaking Knights of Fate apart, able to open up the base at the 14 minute mark, take the last inhibitor, and look, there's their final stand, Blazing Duet from Regrets, but that Astro Echo from Boca Roscoe, able to hit the entire team of Knights of Fate to solidify the wipeout. I think that's what kind of led the way for them to close that out, and some excellent positioning. I mean, Boca Roscoe's just known for these mage picks, right? And Navaria being one of them, you gotta find a way to get them uncomfortable. And looks like the carry is going to go into Boca Roscoe's hand, but the rich guy definitely going into the hands of Sleeps. But looking at the damage dealt, Novaria actually did the most out of his entire team. Easy peasy being the sandbag for sure. The Frederick and Coppola coming in with 15 assists. That is something that everyone should do, have the most amount of assists and help their team lead that snowball and potentially take them to the victory. So we are in our second match. This is potentially match point for Bloodhounds, which means L prediction for Wheezy. Or <laughs> I could take my thing back and say this might be a one-to-one, -one, which means Wheezy's prediction is still on the line. But this is also a very scattered prediction. So there's actually half of us chose Knights of Fate and the other half chose Bloodhounds. So we have a lot of perfect score predictions, not just me, actually. So there's private, there's gimmick. And uh, Xena actually sitting at a perfect prediction score right now. And Weezy's looking to take it off. He's rolling his eyes at me. So we'll definitely see who will take out the prediction. But we also have a battle over here. Knights of Fate versus Bloodhound. So I guess we have two games going on, right? Is it going to be the Caster's Curse is one of them. And who takes the series home for these two teams? Well, I definitely want to see it go to a best of three for two reasons. One, because I want... You know, Knights of Fates to help me with my prediction rates, too, because <laughs> I like seeing things go to a best of three. I don't like seeing one-sided stories. Now, they got a lot of work to do if they want to turn this around. That's no secret, right? I mean, Bloodhounds was able to kind of dominate that entire match. I wouldn't even say it was, eh, it could have been the draft. I mean, the Carmilla was interesting. Teresa was a good pick, though, but it just got shut down, right? I mean, Powerless and also um, Mikasa, right? They're just kind of having a little bit harder time. The Terizla have a 0-5 and 0, right? Not a single kill, not a single assist in that entire game. And then the start of the game, the power spike went to Bloodhounds, and that was only due to the fact of Powerless getting picked off so often and so fast, right? That just gave them what they needed to start that snowball effect, and they couldn't put a stop to it. So jumping into game number two, number one, pick something you're a little bit more comfortable on. Don't go for the Carmilla again. I don't think they're ready for that level. Or at least if they go for the Carmilla... They gotta be able to execute it. You know, maybe they get Sicilian. a little bit of fire. Yeah, Sicilian could be a problem too. Maybe it's an Area 77 case where out, out of nowhere they get a yeah. major upgrade and, and they, they, they showcase their skills in game two. That's what I'm hoping for. But looking at something so far, a little bit of repeating history, we are gonna go ahead and see the export picked up again. Yeah, I feel like it's more of a comfort pick, especially for Dino. But Kai also plays export jungle, so. Either way, this is kind of a flex as we saw that in our previous matches. We're gonna see, ooh, Paquito, yeah. Shadow boxing <laughs> over there and easy peasy. I'm gonna go ahead and lock in the mage for Boca Rosco. It's gonna be Valentina as well. Already draft pressure is coming in from Bloodhounds, which is I feel like is a good read, but there is still mages available, right? 
We could put in the Eve, take the RWM. We could put in Farsa, actually, get the Feather Airstrike. But, you know, there's still a lot on the line. Nothing nothing over yet. Karita's also up. I mean, there. I feel like there's so many, like, holes for Karita to be slotted in, but nobody wants to pick it up. Instead, it gets banned out. Like, for our last series, Avalon straight out banned Karita. And in our previous series before that one, no one just wanted to play Karita, I guess. So, <laughs> definitely want to see Karita getting played out. Kufra. Oh, Kufra is going to go into the hands of Powerless. And he has one of those interesting builds. Wheezy, do you remember? It's Kufra build? No, I don't. Yeah, do you know... You don't know what Powerless I feel like it was like build? I feel like it was like magic items or something like that. Like magic... So he goes... Damage. He goes... I always make fun of him for this, but it works. It works differently for every player, but it is going to be the shoes depending on the team draft. Then he goes straight into... Um, I believe BOD. He goes damage. He goes <laughs> like Thunderbelt into like BOD. Hey, he does some crazy Kufra's... things with Kufra. I, I, I'm serious. Damage. He did this. <laughs> he did this in last or last year's NACT. He might pull it off again, but that's one of Paulus's power picks, actually, the Kufra. But you see, regret running the Claude, or maybe we have to go back, black, uh, bas um Go back to last NACT. Maybe Paralus has to pull up a Hanavi or something. Well, you know, he oh, might he might be oh able to gosh. harass Blast. I, I do not. <laughs> you want saw to his see build. The <laughs> <laughs> but we see Leslie pick up. So it looks like Bloodhounds is gonna go for a late game. But that's also a direct counter to Regrets running the Claude. Yeah, and you know it is a direct counter. It could give Regrets a little bit of a harder time. I think something interesting about this is seeing Dino pick up this Paquito. I mean, he picked it up super early, and my thought process behind it is it's to give Powerless a hard time, right? It's mm -hmm. to kind of counter the export, but it can, it can be a two-way street. I feel like the export can be the key, though, if played correctly. Uh, so it's definitely going to be a battle of execution. And when it comes to execution, I mean, in the last game we've seen Powerless, or at least both Powerless and also Mikasa, a very rough start when it came to execution. And it went into Bloodhound's favor, so I will give them that slight advantage as they're able to execute a little bit smoother but now as the, we are seeing the bands finalized bloodhounds is going to ban out the navaria even though they it worked in the favor last time they're going to ban it out since they up. picked up this valentina and the kadita so uh, now we're going to be looking at possibly some of the junglers being banned out right now nice face is going to go in for that frederick and take that off the board but and martis as well so i'm really want to see what bloodhounds pulls out here um Okay, Frederick's banned. I was gonna say Frederick, but he got banned out. Um, Mardis banned. is banned out. What's left? Can't go higher. I mean, you could, but it'd be hard. Not into a Kufra. I don't think they want to take the Quad Shadow into the ball. Even the Lancelot would be kind of kind of hard here, right? That is hard. Mm, Kufra's direct. Wow. Yeah. Alpha? They banned Alpha too. I was okay. Wait, then what's left? Like, like, uh, Baksha? Bane? I was gonna um, say Bane. Yeah. Baksha, Is there anything else? Uh, is there anything Baksha else? Or we could put Paquito in the jungle, in the yeah. uh, slot in EXP, which I think they might do, but not sure. There's not much okay. really room for the junglers. Oh yeah, they're still okay. They still got a lot of insurance left. Knights of Fate, however, they need a mage, and they've just banned out, like, Good utility mages. Eve is still open. I feel like. Okay. Um. Oh, Valera actually got banned out too. Interesting. Uh. Well, it's see. a hard read. It's a hard it read is. to say. That's what I'm, that's what oh. I'm, okay. Minnow. Okay. So Minotaur. Eh. The I feel like the BMI can easily dodge out the Minonian Fury though. So I feel like. Everyone except for Regrets will have a hard time working around Minotaur, but I can't read these two teams. Like, they, they always have the weirdest picks, but it <laughs> works for them. So, the, yes. I wouldn't say weird, but very interesting picks, but I don't know. Because usually Weezy and I are good at reading drafts. We can kind of tell what they're going to pick, but with these two, we've been having a hard time. I got to I gotta put on my thinking cap, you know what I mean? I got to stick yeah. this one out. <laughs> I say for notes? Knights of Fates. <laughs> Knights of Fates has good late game damage from the Claude. The okay. Two gonna Once more. Make a oh whoa. Harley. Harley sneaking up wait, in wait, here. Wait, now wait, this wait. is interesting. 
I know they played Harley last NACT against BTK. They were doing well with the Harley pick. So, okay. Harley mid. Wait, then mm. Sleeps is going to pick... Oh, no. What do they need? Jungle EXP. I don't think that's Harley Man. mid. I think that's... Har we talked that, oh, about is the Harley main. Main. that is Harley oh, main. That is Harley it's, main. It's, it's Export Jungle. Yeah, Ooh. Zero's gonna run the Harley. This is literally a blast from the past. This is literally it. This is There goes the Bane wow. too. We talked about the Bane being one of the, the last it. options for the so, jungle, so Yeah, so he's gonna he's gonna put Dino uh Paquito in EXP. Wow. This is These two are good drafts though. Like I can't I mean I don't know about the Harley pick though. <laughs> But well, I'll definitely say this matches for in for sure. surprises. I, I don't think there's any... It's, it's hard to read. I, I feel like... I don't know. It, <laughs> but it's not easy to pull off either. And, and I will say, Four Knights of Fate, they pulled out some wild picks. The Carmilla was one of them, and they didn't execute. So the Harley, I mean, they're jumping right back into the same type of plan, and I hope this time it can work in their favor. You know, I'm kind of rooting for that Game 3 so I can get my predictions up for Eunice as we are now jumping in to Game number 2. Of the loser quarterfinals last series of the day we'll be able to move forward into this loser semifinals knights of fate or bloodhounds bloodhounds currently sitting at match point although i want to keep my prediction i would love to see this game go to a bo3 as both teams are also on the edge for points one loss and it's going to put them at a huge disadvantage but i'm i want to see how zero plays this harley pick because i have i've seen it last year you and I seen it last year, but it's going to be a first walking for this season. We've seen a lot of picks getting picked in for the first time, right? We saw Carmilla. Now it's going to be Harley. So definitely. And we also saw Cyclops, which is something we don't see. So very interesting matches so far. Ooh. Mm, a lot of engagement nice and early, but got to be careful. Over aggression can definitely be costly, especially up against a team like Bloodhound who tries to take advantage of the early game i mean just looking at their history they've been scaling through the times they've only been getting better and better knights of fate they need this victory right both of them trying to fight it out bloodhounds currently sitting at the number four spot knights of fate and that four-way tie trying to open up that door but bloodhounds being the gatekeeper doesn't plan on opening it be able to take this match i'm definitely interested to see how knights of fate responds and there goes a the response right there on to sleep uh, massive sleeps. damage bouncing ball they might be able to take him out but the flicker just in time a quick okay. escape but now a punish powerless taken down sleeps draws first blood that is going to be bloodhounds picking that up and he's kind of staying to get the last bit of his gold and that's a first kill is the head of bloodhounds going to start that snowball in that top side as the jungler for the side of Bloodhounds was able to put that in his hands assisted. But we see the macro over on Turtle, but looks like Knights of Fate actually has this. Yeah, it looks like they will be able to take this objective. Kai picking that up. That is going to be a neutral objective into the hands of Knights of Fate. Even though they didn't get first blood, but now the penalties don't drop him down. Regrets is going to find Sleeps on the 1v1 matchup in the gold lane. Kai is going to take down Easy Peasy with the last insanity. Dino rushing in, trying to take down Kai. Volker Roscoe will secure the kill. Two for two on the scoreboard. Who will be able to lead the way in kills? Will it be Knights of Fate? Will it be Bloodhounds? All of them very low. Tyrants what? rage onto the wall. Zero takes down Dino. An amazing set. Powerless fights Coppola. Gets a double. Takes out Boca Roscoe. A huge play from the roamer of Knights of Fate. Gotta definitely watch out for Palos on this Kufra, as that is one of his main picks. But five to two, that's that quickly just turned around. Now we are looking at a 2k goal lead, and the items are starting to stack up slowly but surely. But beautiful kills and beautiful setup coming in for Knights of Fate. And looks like Bloodhounds is gonna go ahead and look for that revenge right back. Trying to look for the revenge, and I'm looking at the Harley, right? Already picking up the arcane boots, has the magic pin. We're gonna have to see how he kind of plays into this. Zero definitely can be a problem. Not your traditional mage that you see. I mean, you mentioned even though back in last NACT, he was with the, uh, what was it, Fallen or uh, Fallout back then. So now looking at him, you know, with this new team, I wanna see how this kind of plays in his favor. But the Harley is definitely interesting. He did pick up one kill, though. He did pick up that kill, but we are still looking at the goal lead siege towards Knights of Fate. Still a 1k goal lead, 5 to 2, nothing really happening, but we are about to hit that 5 minute mark, which means 
lot of items are going to get picked up by both sides. And look at Dino. Looking for zero. Zero. Very low. We'll be able to get out, though. You are going to go ahead and look at the kill lead, though. Five to two. Four minutes in. Knights of Fates having a little bit of an easier time than what they had inside of game one. Game one was more of a snowball. This time around, similar to Area 77, it looks like they found a game plan. They did definitely find a game plan. And Kai's going to go ahead and pick up this turtle first, but Zero just locked in that genius one, so should be able to do some damage, but Power! Oh, another big set from Powerless! He's just knocking him down with the Tyrant's Rage! But, can they draw the kills off of that set? You are going to see the penalty zone drop down from Mikasa, forcing out the flicker. They will be able to make it back to the base, may be able to draw the kill on the Mikasa. Oh my goodness, a huge set goes in from Powerless yet again. Sleeps is going to draw the kill though and take him down. But the aggro the turtles now going to be shift towards easy peasy. But three man setup coming in from both sides. And yeah, speaking of setups, even though powerless is out, you can feel the power from his uh Tyrant's Revenge. It's definitely a key factor to win this. Boko Roscoe is gonna take down Mikasa though. You're gonna see one turtle for both sides of the table, this time going to the Bloodhounds. Yeah, and look at Boko Roscoe. He can't really walk up as Zero can definitely take him off in one go. But let's look at the items here, right? We do see Regrets starting to pick up the DHS is locked in and go ahead and start with his next item. So he sleeps, locking in Burst Circus, so it's gonna start to crit just a little bit more. But rotation towards top side, power. Yeah, power winding up. You know he has some great micro when it comes to this Kufra, but he's definitely gonna have to be careful on not being taken down. He did find two deaths so far within the last five minutes. Uh, given Bloodhounds half of their kills so far, so positioning is definitely key. Kind of similar to game one where he fell a lot, giving them the advantage they needed to win that game. But Kai, with the last insanity, finds easy peasy. And now they may be able to take down Coppola. He is very low, so he's going to have to go back to the base for some regen. Absolutely, but look at the EXP Linears starting to move the, their way towards that mid lane. Still looking for an answer. Bloodhounds not being able to take regrets off the board so easily, but power. And regrets with the blazing duet canceled out. Dino resting in with the heavy left punch. Possibly gonna get a kill. Zero finds Coppola. Dino finds powerless. That is gonna be a one for one on the board. Both roamers falling for both sides. And turtle coming up in about 30 seconds. And that I feel like that is a fair trade, right? Both roamers got taken off. No other bodies were harmed, but Oh, zero. Ooh, hit with the deadly magic. And oh. is going to rush in for the kill. I think that might seal it. Yeah, zero is going to pick him up. Take down sleeps. They got what they came for. Which is going to deny him hitting that power spike as early as he wants to. Especially running this lately. This Leslie is going to scale through time. And zero's actually sitting at three zero. So he hasn't been taken on the board either. But it's not easy to catch a Harley. But power. Like they were almost able to take him out. But the footwork able to get through. You are going to see the aggro of the turtle pulled by Kai getting in position to possibly claim this objective for their team as the turret is going to fall on the top side. Oh, but huge knock up onto Dino. Last ascending drop down. Penalty zone from Mikasa for the setup. Easy peasy claims the turtle. Mikasa finds Coppola. Are they done? Looks like they are. A huge play, but they're able to claim that turtle into the Bloodhound's favor yet again to kind of keep them in this game. They are, but look at Roscoe. Ooh, trying to get away, but the flicker in from Powerless. He wants to take him down, but can't seal the final hits. And now, will cost him his life as easy peasy takes the kill. But Dino rushing in. It's a heavy left punch onto Mikasa. He will be able to escape. Heavy left punch, but beautiful assist coming in from Sleeps. But Zero is looking to take this mid turret down. But barely at bay, but easy peasy. I going to pick up the kill onto him. Uses the last insanity for it. Picks up the immortality on his way out. But, Mikasa. He may be able to get out, but Dino, he's not trying to let him go for free. But the Blazing Duet goes down. Gonna go ahead and clear out these minions, but look at Bloodhounds. Oh, Heavy rotation to the bottom side. Ultimate Sniper drops, and wow. the Siege. Sleeps is gonna take down Mikasa. Regrets is able to get away with the BMI, but wait a minute. A misplay, a stun from Sleeps. Tyrant's Rage onto the wall from Powerless. Almost taking him down, but does not draw the kill. They are gonna have to recall back to the base. Get some regen, which will open up the opportunity for Sleep to claim this turret. But also, in return, I'm gonna go ahead and take away that mid turret away from Bloodhounds. 
And this is, we're seeing a little bit of a different play style than what we saw Bloodhounds last game. They're playing very aggressive, but for this game, they have to be very careful as they need sleeps to make sure that he does get farmed up pretty well. And he is a main hitter of damage, but Dino. Oh, oh, oh. we are starting to see zero hit hard. That's like half the oh, HP yeah. on Dino right there with the deadly magic. Power. Definitely having to be a little bit careful. Not your traditional pick, but working in Knights of Fate's favor. Yeah, definitely working in their favor, but Lord is coming up in about five seconds. Definitely going to see a lot of action happen in a few seconds. And we are about that 10 minute uh, spike right now. So let's do a really quick item check. And I know a lot of these members are going to definitely have a lot in stock for them. So Marksman, we are looking at two core items for Claude, but... Ooh, Zero almost got him caught there, but Leslie has picked up two core items as well. So just a 200 gold difference between both teams, and we are seeing the siege of this Lord. Who's going to get a Dino just got chunked off really low on that backside. He does have the Bloodless Axe, though, to be able to sustain himself for Spellbound. If he did want to stay in this fight, alongside the Brave Smite uh, emblem that he picked up, but he's going to go back to the base for some region, not going to risk it. Lord at about 15% HP. Easy wow. peasy gets it for the Bloodhounds. But Regrets will find Boca Roscoe. You're not getting this for free. Boca Roscoe takes down Regrets. An eye for an eye leaves the world blind as Kai takes down Coppola. And that is a two for one trade. And that is going to be Regrets taking on the board. But then that box be another one right here. Dino. Oh wow. my goodness. Two man set may lead to a kill. Sleeps needs to get out of there. Barely escapes alive. Now going to use the ultimate sniper. Mikasa and Powerless making their way out of the jungle for the Bloodhounds. How are you feeling about Powerless as Kufra, Weezy? I know you've been watching him this entire game with the sets. How are you feeling? I think the question is, how is Bloodhounds feeling? Because those are pretty impactful. It's very explosive. I feel like even as a caster, I can just feel the momentum between each of his sets. He's just executing it so well. I mean, the last game, we seen him kind of falling. He was more of the downfall for the Knights of Fate. But this time around, he's leading the way to a possible victory. The confidence is definitely there from Powerless, and I feel like he's just taking that energy and driving it with his team. And look, the setup once again coming in from Bloodhounds this time, looking to siege away this top side and potentially look for Blood here. Yeah, Bloodhounds trying to find the advantage. Zero very low. We'll be able to escape with the flicker. Gets a kill, takes down Sleeps with the Deadly Magic. Just showing you how good the Harley is. Huge set from Powerless. Double set on the wall, on the Dino, on the Copa. Mikasa draws the kill. From that amazing assist and a knockup, Boca Roscoe finds zero. No inferior drop down. Kai is going to find Copa that will respond. Easy peasy takes down Mikasa, gets a double, finds Powerless. Leaving Regrets and Kai by themselves, but Regrets is going to claim a turret on the bottom side. Left alone is opening up the map for the Knights of Fates. A beautiful set coming in from Copa. Three-man knockup and Boca Roscoe and Easy peasy. Oh. Ooh, take away the inhibitors. Ooh, okay, but that's at least the turret passive popped which means Lord is definitely going to go hunting down that top side for Knights of Faith. Definitely have to be careful on that, but opening up the map, Regrets also did open up the map for them as well, which leaves the top inhibitor turret open for Bloodhounds. Yeah, it's going to leave that open. So far, 15 to 11, 12 minutes in. Now making our way into the mid game. You are looking at Bloodhounds. Currently taking out three turrets, but four falling for them. They're able to win in terms of turtles, though. They got oh, one more zero. over the Knights of Fates. So we're going to go ahead and see Sleeps. the gold difference pretty much even between these two powerhouse teams. Who? Is there any taken down? Is that enough? Powerless. But a set. Powerless yet again, finding the opportunity. But Knights of Fate not able to make the most out of the situation. You just got to give him credit. If there was an MVP in the making so far for this game on Definitely Knights of Fate. Power. 100% going to Powerless. Yeah, but it looks like Lord is coming up in about five seconds. So we're going to definitely see the rotation over there. And you're going to watch out for zero, four, one. Definitely kind of trying to target Sleeps, right? Sleeps can only be, he can't even get that old body blocked. So he has to be careful. He can't walk up too far. We're going to have to see the setup right now. We do see four against five. Power. The damage going in, Lord at about 50% HP. Endless battle being picked up from Sleeps to be able to fight it out. This engagement, Kai though, wow. last minute will steal the Lord for the Knights of Fate. This is what they came for, and they want blood. Easy peasy, we'll find Mikasa though. 
to respond. You're not going to get this Lord for free. Bokorosko, Winter Trench, and High IQ play the dodge. The Blazing Duet, but not enough to save him as Powerless will get the kill. Kai Unstoppable takes down Dino. Immortality propped on to Kai. Can he get away? Last of Sanity's into sleep. Ultimate Sniper for the response. Zero taken. Not one, not two. Is going to be able to negate the damage and allow him to escape. But at what cost? Wow. Sleep will find Powerless. Yeah, Sleeps is definitely throwing some bullets now, a big hit in the face, but that is a lord for Knights of Fate. Bloodhound's gonna have to slowly rework their way back and reorganize their waves as that is not what they wanted for this particular time right now. We are looking at the 15 minutes, so everyone's starting to get their items in, and once the items get dragged out and once the game also gets dragged out, we're looking at long death timers. 15 minutes, Wheezy, what are you feeling? Oh, I, I feel like this can still go to either side. It is a close game, though. I wouldn't say this is one-sided. I mean, you're looking at the items. Most of them getting stacked to their full build at the 14-minute mark. But oh, here we go. No. Siege for the Tier 2 turret. Last Sandy going in. Easy peasy immortality being proc. Couple very low, but no one fear for the double knockup. Regrets getting the Tier 2 and a kill. We'll find Coppola. Dino now needing to get away. He's going to dodge the damage. But they did lose that turret for the top side. They did lose it, but they're about to lose their mid side as well. Powerless jumping once again. Oh my, oh my goodness! God. Whoa! A four man set! Mikasa finds Sleep's Regrets, find Boko Roscoe, Easy PT, and Dino by themselves! Is this what they needed? Will they be able to take it to a game three? Deadly Magic goes on to Easy Peasy. Back for the region, but not able to sustain himself. He gets a kill. Dino by himself. Knock, knock. Who's there? Knights of Fate trying to end this game, but Dino for the denial. Not enough, though. Minions are there, and Knights of Fate are going to take Bloodhounds to a game three. Definitely will take it to a game three. One to one. This time, the win is going to be Knights of Fate's hand. And looks like they are not ready to go home. Both of these teams are tight right now. And we're going to have to see where <laughs> these two teams are going to take us. Oh, we see my prediction. Look at you oh, yeah. Over there. <laughs> Let's go. That's what I wanted. Game yeah, three. Yeah, but that is a very intense game, though. However, Knights of Face was able to turn things around as Bloodhounds, with that draft, was not able to play it to their potential. And in our first match, we saw Bloodhounds play more of the aggressive game but maybe when they have a draft that takes time that could be their weakness but we are looking at a potential match three so very excited but wheezy how are you feeling your predictions hey man i'm just trying to get on the same wave as you way right i mean he might be on to something but now moving on to the post game stats 22 to 13 a 15 minute game we are looking at a 15 minute game, 22 to 13, Bloodhounds fell a little bit short against Knights of Fate. We are looking at zero and regret, getting taken off the board only once, but Kai, beautiful rotations coming in, and looks like that is their pocket pick. Exporg should not be tossed over to the hands of Knights of Fate, but if we look at sleeps, right? You put a very late marksman, just kind of puts Bloodhounds at a little bit of a disadvantage as they love to play that aggro early game. So maybe they have to switch their draft around. But both the team, both of these teams know now how each team plays. So definitely have to keep an eye out for both of these two teams. Yeah, I mean, I think the keys to victory for the side of Knights of Fate is to get powerless online. I mean, if you run something that he's comfortable on, they perform way differently uh, then when he's uncomfortable that Carmilla was not it but that Kufra was that it Kufra was on another level He was hit you are gonna <laughs> let him cook let him cook as <laughs> you are gonna go ahead and see this replay as they do push through into the base for the Bloodhounds on game two to even out the series Bloodhounds they needed to close this one out but now may lose their top four spot because of this this game three is gonna decide everything and may change the entire dynamic of the NACT fall season and their placement for top four. And we're gonna see the rich guy being regrets coming with that claw, but carries gonna be zero this time. 27% damage. Dino taking most of the hits. 130,000 damage. That is more than Coppola. But Powerless gonna be the forgotten one as he has 12 assists and Powerless on Kufra. He's just him. He's him. The <laughs> flicker he him? set, the ults. <laughs> I mean, Weezy, you saw it for yourself. The Kufra is insane. Yeah, I mean, that was probably the most impressive Kufra sets I've seen so far in NACT. Honestly, it was a pleasure casting that game. I didn't expect to see that. I mean, Powerless, you would have said he was the demise of the team. 
you only watched game one, but when you see game two, no, he's the he's the keys well, to he, everything. He he's got the different. Keys to the city. So I think for game number three, especially for Bloodhounds, they gotta ban the Kufra out. They have to. I think that might have to be a respect ban coming in, right? Powerless was just untouchable, and giving out those it kind of reminds me of um, Gauss from A77 giving ah. away those good sets, right? So definitely always on the. Wait, actually, it's funny because the set that Parlous was giving was also on the same marksman, which was that Leslie, right? Basic was running Leslie, and he was very easily to catch. But Fanny and Ling, it's gonna get banned out for Bloodhounds, but Knights of Fate, they have a lot of options left still. I'm guessing they're gonna ban out those EXP laners, so definitely Uranus will be one. Uh, X Fork, okay. So x has been picked up by both teams once now, so I don't think they want to give it up at all, so they kind of force them out. I'm going to go ahead and ban out Easy Peasy's Martyrs, the 3000 Worlds, the first Savage. Angela is going to get banned, and Bloodhounds' bans have been the same for all three of these rounds so far. They're very consistent. But Knights of Fate? Hmm. They're thinking about their last ban. Never we'll know see. which way this is gonna go. I mean, I really don't. I can't even. I can't tell. <laughs> I think. I think they just gotta get something that Powerless can profit on. I, I don't think the Carmilla was it, but like something with a good set potential, dive set potential too. I think he's a really good initiator for these engagements, right? Not playing Definitely. a hero that's more passive. He needs to be up in the front line, creating the opportunity and soaking up that damage. Uh, so I mean, Kufra is still available. What else is gonna let it walk? Do they pick it up first pick or? They're going to give Knights of Fate what they're looking for. A, a possible key to victory to close out this series. Hmm. They shouldn't have luck. Wow. Oh, we know. Now, Paralys is definitely going to pick up that Kufra. Okay. <sighs> oh! oh they have the Uranus. But see, in response, they can always be a Turizla, right? But Uranus is definitely going to be hard to kill. I'm looking at a, maybe a potential carry pickup. Claude pickup for the Uranus for late game. Definitely won't be killing early game. He's a big chunk of metal that walks around that just heals every couple <laughs> seconds. So you're definitely not going to see him do that. But I am going to guess. You're going to do a guessing game? Oh, yeah. Let's Kufra, go. Kufra. Kufra and... Hmm. Okay. Kufra. Got one. How about you? Ah, oh, shoot. Okay. This will be hard. Maybe a carry, I don't know, something that can, like, soak into this Uranus. She's gonna be Valentina. pretty much unkillable. Um, oh, they're gonna go in for the Fred. Fred. though. Okay. It's a safe option. I call safe. Valentina. This side. Bloodhounds? Yes. You know, I'm Actually, surprised I don't know. they didn't pull out Valentina. I don't know, because Valentina can't profit off of any of this right now. So, uh, another Novaria. Eve? Uh, I don't know. I, I, the thing is, usually you and I can read drafts pretty easily because there's a there's a response, but with these two teams, there's never a response. So I don't know. Poker Roscoe might slot in Valentina. He played it well last game. Um, oh, no. okay. Game okay. time. Well, Gord's um, really good right now too. I mean, I've been seeing yeah. everybody talking about him, so I can't carry. wait to see how this plays into the Land of Dawn. And there goes the carry we were kind of talking about, but I would have expected it to be Knights of Fate, but no. They're gonna go ahead and pick that up instead. I mean, they know they don't have like a Lolita to negate the Speedy Light Will, so those Novaria. are two frontline heroes that the carry can profit from. Novaria or Valentina, I feel like. They're, bo they're both really good. But, actually, I feel like they are they might have to pick up their marksman early or else Bloodhound's gonna ban it because there's Claude still open, right? Brody's still open. A lot of good marksmen are open and it leaves too much room for uh, Dino. Because he's playing Uranus, but you you put Claude or a good marksman that does a lot of burst damage. Dino's not gonna do anything with the consecration over there, so. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Mm, you see? Early marksman pickup's gonna be the Claude. Okay, so now Knights of Fate's missing mage. And what? Jungle? Potential jungle potential jungle, right? Uh, we've right. seen Fred in the EXP lane, so there's that. Bloodhouse is missing a roamer. And a jungler. They're going up against the Kufra. Okay. I'm surprised they let the Kufra walk, considering how much of a factor it played in it. They 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 countered out 
counter that with um, Uranus, though. I mean, Kira can also always run the Purify as well. So, there's two potential Purifies. We see Kaja. Okay, Kaja got banned. Bloodhound. Varya got Varya. banned as well. Okay, so that's okay. not going to work. So, that, that's oh. a good one, right? Prevents vision. But there's still no answer for Powerless. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. I'm really I'm interested kinda, in seeing the I'm just Gord on Boca Rosco. I don't think yeah, I've, exactly. Have you seen Boca Rosco run the Gord before? No. We've yeah, only I think seen this what? Maybe Hoon? a first. We've only yeah, seen Hoon run the Gord. So I'm excited to see him pull that out. I think it's uh, something that Knights of Fate is going to have to properly counter. And so far, I'm not really seeing mm -hmm. one. I mean, I guess you got regrets maybe... if you try and dive in, but that's Franco? the best. Or oh, maybe the Kufra as well. But Frank was also could be an option. good here. Suppression. I'm... Okay, Alpha. Alpha Ban. Alpha Ban, okay. Wait, which means. What can they jungle with? Export's banned, Mardis is banned, Freden's picked up, Alpha's banned, Bane's still open, they banned Harley. <laughs> okay, Harley's a good ban, but Valentina's still up. Zero played Valentina. What I was gonna thinking? say the Mardis, but the Mardis was banned out. The if, got if you're looking banned. at junglers for the yeah. Bloodhounds, Bane, Bane would be okay. Uh, Bane would be yeah, a solid option here. Yeah, there's too much magic already. Okay. I think Rizla. they can still pull it off, but the Rizla is in there. Uh, this is going to be a, a pretty good one. There's a lot of frontline presence so far from the Knights of Fate, though. You have the Tarizla, you have the Frederick, and you have the Kufra, mm -hmm. right? There's not even, uh, I mean, I guess magic damage is technically from Powerless, but they're only really going to have, like, one true magic damage dealer. As we still are waiting for the mage to be selected for the Knights of Fate, but when we look at their composition, they have okay early game damage provided by the Tarizla. Minotaur. The but they need a little bit more, so... Minnow. Let's see which way this goes. The Minotaur Roam? What else? I mean, Coppola had good sets on Minotaur, though. He played it He played it decently well, so... I think that'd I be mean, a good that's one. Kind of your, that's kind of your viable option. You go. You can put Lolita, but he's, she's going to get cancelled out by Penalty Zone and BMI. He's gonna, not going to do anything. And then Fredder and Taunt. Baksha. Oh. Edith. Hey. Okay, okay. Okay, but then what is Zero going to play? Eve? Eve is actually not bad here. Yeah, there's not. I mean, there's, there's not, not really, really much to too get much to dive. Him. Exactly. So, or even a Farsa is not bad here. Honestly, there's no dive for for her. Um, I, I think both are definitely viable. Kadita options. is still Kuro open too. On whatever he runs. I, I mean, Kadita's looking at the draft so far, it's just gonna be it's gonna be easy peasy running this carry is what my only worry for Knights of Fate is right. The carry. Not only going to shut down Mikasa, it can shut down uh, Kai and also Powerless. It can definitely be a problem, and there's no dive. There's no dive to really get back to him outside Paris. of that. I guess you, I guess you have regrets okay. in Powerless to possibly do it, but yeah, there we go. Last pick being slotted in. Knights of Fate finalizing their draft for the mm -hmm. final game of the day. They're going to go ahead and pick up that Harith. Harith into a Edith, though? The Thunder Shatter is going to knock him airborne. If he gets caught once... His, his vision is not going to do too much, but definitely, again, two late game marksmen. Bloodhounds love to play aggressive early games, so definitely Dino running the Uranus is definitely going to help. But Knights of Fate loves to go that mid to late game. They're team fighters, so it, I feel like it depends on how Bloodhounds decide to snowball, but Knights of Fate also has a good draft. They picked up the Kufra, so Herithus is free running until Coppola CCs zero, but Wheezy... Take us in. That's right. Game number three, the final game of the day. The last match for the quarterfinals of the Losers Bracket. Stage two of the NACT fall. Bloodhounds up against Knights of Fate. Both of them sitting at match point. And speaking of points, Knights of Fate trying to make their way out of that fifth position into the top four. Bloodhounds being the gatekeeper, holding that number four position. A huge match, which could change the entire gravity of the NACT fall season. Yeah, speaking about gravity, we're already seeing a lot of damage coming in from Boca Roscoe, and Gord actually has been pretty popular pick, not only in NA, but MPL as well. And his true damage, a true magic damage, is doing enough to kill a lot of that backline. And we see it in firsthand with TOB, Hoon running in that Gord, so definitely the Mystic Gush is going to do a lot of damage. But I also have to keep an eye out for Sleeps. His carry was doing phenomenal, but how was <laughs> oh, goodness. Nice and early. There it goes. This is why you don't let him pick the Kufra. Did you see that? They almost took down Boca Roscoe in the blink of an eye. 
Yeah, speaking of blink of an eye, we can see how a lot of things change, especially in the EXP lane right now. Dino's getting body bagged by Terizla, so this is the matchup that we haven't really been able to see because those two always get banned out, but we are going to see it today. Who will be the better EXP laner? Is it going to be the Terizla or the Uranus? But new trajectory coming in about 30, but Boko Rosco needs to be careful for a powerless. And he's, he is one beast on this coup from a topside. Yeah, and he was the deciding factor on how they won game number two and maybe oh, the, the option wheel. for game number three, but there goes the cheese wheel from Easy Peasy Powerless winding up. Not gonna go in with the Tyrant's Revenge yet, but definitely have to watch out for it. I really want to see how he kind of plays into this match. Was it a fluke? Was it just a coincidence or is he just him on the Kufra? He might just be him. Speaking about him, Boca Roscoe is just getting caught out every single time. By Powerless with Mikasa's positioning. But Dino rushing in is running this Uranus, the unkillable. Does have the Brave Smite as well to sustain himself. Turtle Aggro has been pulled. May possibly get reset, but a huge wow. knock on the way. Zama Force dropping down. Copla very low. Zero drawn first blood. Everybody caught in that Zama Force. May not be able to escape. Kai is going to take down Easy Peasy. Miscalculation for the Bloodhounds. Dino takes Whoop. down Kai, though. Gets a double. Finds Zero. Wait a minute. Powerless is going to find Dino. Gets a stun on a Boko Rosco to allow Mikasa to pick up the kill. That is four to two so far and a reset for this turtle. And Sleeps is just having, I don't know, Sleeps seems kind of bored. <laughs> He's just sitting there waiting for Claude while there's a whole battle coming out in that turtle pit. But still, nobody has picked up this objective yet. So it looks like we're going to see one more fight, except this time, Bogorosko is definitely going to have that Mystic Gush to help his team with all that damage. Yeah, and I mean, right now, Knights of Fate. They are leading by two kills and already up by about 600 gold. They need to get this turtle to kind of lead the way for the early game, but Bloodhounds is not going to let it go without a fight. There it goes. Boko Rosco connecting on the Powerless is going to shut him down with the Mystic Gush, but fight not over. Turtle doesn't get reset. Retribution out. Mikasa is able to claim that for the Knights of Fate. Easy peasy. We'll find Kai. Everybody very low. Mikasa is going to find Coppola, but may fall. Zero takes down Dino. Mikasa still alive. Survives all of that damage. Six to four on the scoreboard. And that's what we wanted to see from Mikasa. He wasn't doing so great on that Terizla pick the first match and the second match, but now he's sitting at 2-0-4. Definitely being able to sustain a lot of damage for his team. But we have to look at also at 0 2 one, three, but oh my goodness, crazy. Powerless just in his natural habitat right now. Just dominating, providing these sets, and Boca Rosco is going to fall. Oh, Zero picking up that kill in the mid lane, and another kill may be on the way as Mikasa finds himself in a 2v1 situation, and they take him down. we got to give some love over to the top side, Weezy. There's been too much things going on in the turtle with the EXP laners, but Sleeps is actually farming up pretty well, but Regrets does have a level up against him, and we're going to see the potential claws here. Power. Ooh, another set on the way. Bouncing ball with that Tyrant's Revenge. But wait a minute. Coppola very low. Oh Kai picks up the kill. The Brazer's Wrath is able to shut him down. Sleeps is going to chase down Kai and take him out for the response. But she's will in effect toward his pursuance as well. Trying to slow down Powerless. Boca Roscoe dealing damage. <laughs> able to get the stun inside of the turret as well. We were wondering how the Gorb was going to play into this so far. It's still a little shaky oh. from what I've seen. One, two, and two, but time will tell. Dino just took away the blue buff, so it's for a turret, for a buff, I don't know, but definitely is a little bit far from taking away from Knights of Fate, or yeah, Knights of Fate, but are they looking for a siege here? Zero low. Possible counterplay, yeah. powerless, and again, a stun on a Boko Roscoe! He's able to find the backline at any given moment, and down goes Boko, his third death so far, but a knock of Prazer's Wrath, a slam dunk for a double kill, Kai takes down Coppola, and now another set from Powerless, he's just all over the Bloodhounds right now. Yeah, it looks like Dino is still doing a little bit of zoning, doing a good job on this Uranus, but finally a little bit short, Carrie still has time to come online, sleeps, Gotta watch out for him as well, but regrets also running this Claude, but Turtle. Kai is gonna pick up that Turtle for the Knights of Fate. That is two Turtles so far in their hands, left unanswered, which is gonna increase their goal lead. 
by almost 2,000 and also boost the XP for their team as a battle in the mid lane oh on the way. Huge penalty goodness. zone for the fly oh knockup. Easy peasy is going to find Mikasa. Zero oh the spawn finds goodness. Dino with the Zombin Force. Picks up a double, finds Copal, but Easy peasy gets a double to respond back. We'll find Powerless and shut him down. Is it two for two trade actually? EXP and Rome both got taken off the board, but looks like Nets kind of overstepped that fight as they were not, they were looking to siege a turret. However, they were not able to, but Focus comes over to the top side. Easy peasy making his way over, stopping regrets from going out this way. Yeah, definitely stop him. As you're looking at the items, Demon Hunter Sword and the Golden Staff picked up by regrets. Sleep's able to get two of his core items as well the Corrosion Scythe and the Golden Staff. Definitely looking good for both gold laners. Neither of them uh, finding a death so far. I think that's definitely one of the keys to victory is, is trying to get one of them uncomfortable and delay their late game presence. Yeah, but Easy Peace is actually ahead of um, Kai right now by two levels. So you can tell he's been farming. Also, sitting at more than 50% of the team's kills right now, sitting at 413, but Kai is sitting at 436 is able to tank a lot of that damage, but you can tell Easy Peasy has been just trying to farm all the objectives, but here comes the Cheese Wheel. Right, Cheese Wheel rushing in. Easy Peasy trying to be the frontline jungler, but now responded back from the Bloodhounds and the damage. AOF, though, trying to still take down some of the members, increase this kill lead. Conceal. May be able to pull it off, but a possible counterplay on the way is the Conceal play does get called out from the Bloodhounds. Will not amount to anything for the mid lane. But we do see Turtle coming up. Both teams looking to siege over this neutral objective. But mid side, we do see a little bit of a pairing with Sleeps and Bokorosko. Mikasa in a good position to get those two squishies in the back lines. But looks like Agro is being pulled towards Knights of Fate for this objective. Third time's a charm, Powerless. right? I mean, Bloodhounds lost oh. both Turtles so far. But can they get this Powerless again? The monstrosity, Kufra being a problem, but there it goes, Boca Roscoe trying to get a kill with the Mystic Gush, flickers in, finds Mikasa Kai, oh my we'll get goodness. the turtle for the Knights of Fate, additional shield has been activated, Powerless gets a kill, Zero takes down Easy Peasy, Blazing Duet from Regret, Zero Unstoppable is going to take down Easy Peasy, a double kill as he finds Dino on his path to destruction, leaving Boca Roscoe, leaving Sleeps by themselves, both backlines for the Bloodhounds, can they stop them from pushing in the turret, Kai is going to activate a kill, is going to get Boca Roscoe, killing spree, does go into effect and down goes the turret for the mid lane. I feel like there had to be a little bit more of that focus towards sleeps, right? He's sitting at 103, it hasn't been taken off the board, but Copla sitting at 06, not something you really kind of want to see the Romans dying too much, right? Powerless is sitting at 2 2 with 12 assists, so that's how you know he's been everywhere on the map, but we gotta have to protect sleeps as he is really the determining factor. But how fast can they get there when we already see the snowball starting to happen? 6k gold lead from Knights of Fate and Bloodhounds looking for an answer. Oh, and they may have found an answer in the hands for Knights of Fate. Easy peasy, taking down to about 50% HP. And right now, I mean, Knights of Fate, are, they're, they're pretty solid. It's almost 10 minutes in. They haven't lost a single turret. They've taken every single turtle. And they've taken three turrets away from the Bloodhounds, increasing their gold lead to 5,000. Absolutely, but... We might see a potential sandwich over here from Knights of Fate. Power charging up. There it goes. Gets a set on to Coppola. And they are going to lock in for a possible kill. Coppola not able to get the Primal Wrath in time. Godlike kill gets taken down. Regrets will claim the tier 2 turret for the lane as well. But on the bottom side, a possible trade in objectives. As you are going to go ahead and see Dino left uncontested. May be able to clear that out. Does claim that turret for the Bloodhounds. But leaves open the inhibitor. But Powerless charging up once again. Now, see, Bloodhounds can't really walk up because of Powerless. That's how much pressure he's giving on this Kufra. And because of the Tyrant's Rage, the CC, the instant CC as well, can't really do much. And Sleeps and Dino is definitely running the pier, but once Book of Rasu gets caught out, the damage is not there anymore, which kind of puts Bloodhounds at a disadvantage. Yeah, definitely going to put him at a disadvantage, as you are going to go ahead and see another set from Powerless, this time catching Dino, the unkillable Uranus. Can they take him down? Mr. Goods from Bokorosko from afar. You are going to go ahead and see Dexter join the party. Give him a slight advantage in numbers. Lord at about 75% HP. Bokorosko takes down Mikasa. Blazing Duet from Regret. Zero is going to find a kill. Legendary one. Regrets is going to take down Dino. Zero is going to find Coppola for the double. This will open up the opportunity for the Knights of Fate to claim this Lord. And Bloodhounds is doing a good job chunking off Knights of Fate, but there's always... They can't finish it off. 
as they don't have enough damage just yet. We are looking at almost a 10k goal lead coming in from Knights of Faith. Bloodhound's kind of in a very difficult situation. Boca Rosco got picked off way too many times in that early game, but Coppola also getting taken off the board eight times, and that's not looking too great as they were looking for more of a set potential, right? But we did talk about this in draft. Can't really pick a good roam into Knights of Faith's draft as they have a lot of CC. But speaking about CC, Sleeps is just trying to get back online. He is level 12 right now, but Regrets is sitting at the full 15 minute power spike. But before we get there, we are looking at a pause that is called in from Bloodhounds. And it looks like a little bit of a technical issue coming here, but Wheezy, I know this. you see this Lord coming down this mid side. You think Knights of Fate can close this game out? Ah, uh, it's definitely possible. Bloodhounds is going to be at the top of the game to deny it. A giveaway code did just pop up on the screen, though. Make sure you guys claim this code in-game for a chance to win a permanent Dark Gent Roger skin. I mean, who wouldn't want to play that, right? Roger, we've seen him get that last M-Series skin, and now a free permanent skin for you guys to be able to pick up as well. Grab those phones, put in that code now while it's still available. Yeah, definitely. But going back to what I was saying, right? Regret sitting at 1-0 power, sitting with 18 assists and 0. 0 sitting at 10 kills right now, and that's what happens if you kind of give power over with that Kufra pick and their synergy is just unstoppable right now. And Wheezy, give me some tips for each team, how they can flip things around. Uh, for Knights of Fate, they just got to keep doing what they're doing. Trust and powerless, get the sets and make the most out of the sets that he provides. For Bloodhounds, stop getting in Powerless's way. Find a way for him not to get you set up. That's definitely a start. Also, keeping Sleeps and Boca Roscoe alive. Boca Roscoe's already fallen four times on this gourd. Only 11 minutes in, and that's the most deaths that we've really seen on Boca, Boca Roscoe in a while. Sleeps not really hitting the mark on this carry. Even though he has the potential to burst down all of the frontline composition for the Knights of Fate, he doesn't have the items yet. They're too far back in the economy. That's a 9,000 gold lead for the Knights of Fate. So play for the late game. Get Sleeps the items he needs, and they can close it out and turn this around. If Bloodhounds last to the late game, they have the composition that can win, but Knights of Fate looking to end this early. Yeah, Sleeps definitely has the potential to come back into the game, but how soon can you do that as Regrets already has level 15? Sleeps is still sitting at level 12 and easy peasy. The boxer pick is doing good. He's frontlining with Dino and Coppola, but I don't feel like there's enough burst coming in for Boca Rosco and Sleeps just yet. And Sleeps hasn't hit his power spike yet. We're only looking at 11 minutes. He's a little bit behind. Purify is still up to his advantage, but this Lord is spiraling down and this might be the end of it or we might look <laughs> to see for another. Oh, that just got deleted. Never mind. We're going to look for another Lord Siege potentially. That was the fastest Lord I've ever seen fall. I don't, I don't think that's a record breaker right there. Everybody on Bloodhound's focusing on it's a good defense. Maybe the boss working in their favor for that plan. But now you are going to go ahead and see Knights of Fate having to kind of pick Power. their next play. Do they push in? Do they try and be aggressive and claim some of these inhibitors? Or do they wait for the next opportunity, starve out the Bloodhounds, make them rush out for some economy, or rush out to try and contest the next neutral objective on the board? Somebody needs to shut down Zero. Zero just been free hitting everything, right? He's sending at almost 10k gold with his full, almost his full build, and he has one item left for him to go ahead and build in. But if we look at carry up alongside Claude, look at that. 4k godly. gold difference. Yeah, Godly is right. But speaking of Godly, look at the siege. You are gonna see regrets get to the back line, finds Boko Roscoe with the blazing duet and the BMI. He gets back out to safety again. Just not profiting on this Gord pick. Not what Bloodhounds was really looking to kind of do with it. And now it's working against them as they are going in for the finish. Easy peasy is gonna find Mikasa. Zero gonna find Coppola. Gets a double, finds Oh my goodness, a triple! Easy peasy will find powerless. That is gonna be only easy peasy by himself to defend. There's only one lane of minions. He is gonna use the cheese wool, but may get graded down from the Knights of Fates. Regrets is gonna shut him down. A full wipeout, but Boca Rosco oh, back in time, but not enough! And down goes the base crystal. The Knights of Fates has done it! They have disrupted the space-time continuum and have disrupted Bloodhound's placement in the top four. And that secures a spot for Knights of Fate for the semifinals bracket. But Wheezy, I am happy for Knights of Fate, but I just lost my prediction. Oh yeah. You know what? 
Yue just got his second prediction, and I'm right alongside him. So hey, trust in uh, Yue, trust in Powerless. I guess that's the way we're going today. I did lose my 100% prediction rates, but congratulations, that's a fate. You guys actually played that very well, and that's what happens if you give Powerless Cooper. And if I had to give MVP, Powerless. But break oh, these yeah. down for me, Weezy.